service all those joining us from all over the world thank you so much for joining us again today thank you for allowing us to come into your home we believe that the word of God for you is ready and you to you are ready to receive glory be to his name how are you doing how is your family we trust the Lord who have been keeping you and he will continue to keep you that is the word from the Lord he is faithful he is true Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to his name. Amen. Welcome again, all our ICCLA global family and friends. This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice in it. We will be glad in it for the Amen. joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, tell whoever is around you, I will boast in, I the, will Lord. Boast in the Lord. For the Lord God is our King. Who works great acts and deeds of deliverances yes. in the yes. midst of his people. Amen. And I know he is working great acts of deliverance yes. in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory and now God. let us just worship him and praise him Amen. as we boast in the God of all deliverances and our God of salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I hear you shout hallelujah in the house where you are? If you're in your car, whatever it is, the Bible says that everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. So I ask you, praise ye the Lord, and you say hallelujah. This morning we'll be lifting up our voice in praise. Singing hallelujah to the most high God. Because the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. And because he keeps us as the apple of his eyes, he says we are engraved upon the palm of his hands. And therefore we have the assurance that we are ever safe and secure. Hallelujah. Come on, put on your dancing shoes this morning. And let's together exalt the name of the most high God. Yes. 
because there is no other God but Him. Praise Him because He's the only dependable God that we know. He's the only reliable God. He's the only self-made God. He doesn't need anyone to be the God that He is. He doesn't need you to do the things that He needs to do. Nobody can stop Him. Nobody can change Him. Nobody can or God will limit our God. tell the fellow sitting next to you right there at home that now is the pandemic next is the glory go ahead and help me tell them tell them that now is the pandemic but next is the glory next is the glory don't panic don't panic yeah now is the shutdown but next is the glory hallelujah to the lamb of god you know a lot of prophecies went out uh, in the old testament about jesus christ about the coming of the lord a lot of those prophecies went out from the Holy Spirit to the prophets. And the prophets couldn't really reconcile what they were hearing from the Holy Spirit. Uh, what they were hearing were incongruous. What they were hearing were irreconcilable. What they were hearing were dilemmatic. What they were hearing, uh, they, they just couldn't understand. They couldn't fathom what they were hearing from the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit would say one thing and then say another thing. But what the Holy Spirit says next is just incongruous what the Holy Spirit had just said. And so, a lot of these prophecies went out in the Bible. And even in the New Testament, even Peter, the Apostle Peter in 1 Peter 1.12, 1 Peter 1, 12, he even said that even the angels, even the angels, they really too couldn't understand what those prophecies really meant because of the way that they came. Because on the one hand, the Holy Spirit will say something, and what the Holy Spirit will say will be so clear and so glorious and so blissful. And then the Holy Spirit will say another thing that will throw what he has just said into some kind of uh, doubt or confusion that confuses people. And this was going on in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. So I want to share with you this morning, I want to share with you today a message that teaches us that the prophetic life of our Lord Jesus Christ, his prophetic life is a mirror of the lives of God's people. His prophetic life, God wants us to understand that his prophetic life is also the prophetic paragon of our own lives. They mirror our own lives. What the Lord went through uh, is what we are going through now. God wants us to see ourselves the way Jesus saw himself, all the things that the Lord went through and how it came out at the end for the Lord, that is how God wants us to see what we are going through and how it will come out in the end for us. Amen. And that is what I want to teach today. And I pray that the Lord God Almighty, he will open our eyes to see what he wants us to see today. The Bible says that in this world we will have tribulations, but we should be of good cheer because Jesus has overcome the world. Amen. Let us pray. Father, your word is light and it will lighten and brighten the recesses of our soul. Your word is like fire. Father, we pray that it will melt every hardened heart today. 
Your word is water. Let it wash us spiritually afresh today. Your word, God Almighty, is a hammer. Let it break every stronghold of the enemy in our lives today. Let your word, O oh God, be profitable unto us for time and for eternity. We take authority over every spirit that wants to check the word of God in the lives of God's people. And we checkmate you first in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that all spiritual birds that have gathered right now to eat the seed of this word, we scatter them in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and give you praise. Use these lips of clay to minister to all those who are hearing me from all over the world. And let your word rule and reign in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Help me tell your neighbor again. Now the pandemic. Next is the glory. Now the pandemic. Next is the glory. Hallelujah. From Genesis to Revelations. From Genesis to Revelations. The prophecies about the coming son of God. And God the son. They were inexplicable. To the prophets that received them. They were irreconcilable to the prophets that received them. They were dilemmatic. They created a dilemma for those that received them. They would create some kind of confusion for those that received them. Even Peter said, even the angels, uh, they don't understand this and they want to search it out. They want to know what it is all about. Let me give you some examples. The Bible says in Genesis 3.15, Genesis 3.15, that the seed of the woman shall prevail. And that is the good news. Now, if you read it in some version, you will see that the word seed, the letter S, is in uppercase. So, that word seed is actually referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. So, the Bible is saying in Genesis that the Lord Jesus Christ, he will prevail. He shall prevail. And that is good news. But then, the Bible now says that the Spirit of God ministers again. So the writer of Genesis, that even though he shall prevail, it is not until after he has been bruised. And then you begin to wonder, God the Son, he has the power to prevail, and yet he will, he will, he will not be able to save himself from being bruised? They couldn't understand that it was it's irreconcilable. Irreconcilable. Go to Genesis chapter 49 verse 10. Genesis 49 verse 10 says, that the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the Lord give her from between his feet until shall come, that unto him shall the gathering of the people be. That is great news. Shiloh is coming. The lion of the tribe of Judah is coming. But then, in verse 11, immediately after verse 10, the next 10 sentences, he washed his garments in blood. So wait a minute. What, what is this again? I thought he is, he is coming to prevail. I thought the garden of the people are going to be unto him. Now, why would he have to wash his garments in blood? He's coming to rule the people. He's coming to rule and reign. What is going to happen to him that his garments will be washed in blood? But then, look again. Psalm 2. Let's go to the Messianic Psalms. Psalm 2, 6 through 11. It says, my king have I set upon my holy hill of Zion. I will give him the nations for an inheritance. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. Serve him with fear. Again, here he's talking about Jesus. That Jesus God the Father has said upon his holy hill. That he will rule the nations with rod of iron. That he will give him the nations as an inheritance. That the people of the world should serve him with fear. But then, another messianic psalm, Psalm 22, verse 1 says, Jesus himself, while on the cross said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Wait a minute. Why God, Jesus is saying, God, God the Son is saying that God the Father has forsaken him. How will that happen? After he has said, I have given you the nations, I will give you their inheritance, you will rule them with the rod of iron. So why will God all of a sudden forsake him again? irreconcilable, incongruous, is dilemmatic to them. They just couldn't understand it. What is the Holy Spirit saying? What is the Holy Spirit saying? Psalm 22, verse 16 through 18. 22, 16 through 18. He said, they pierced my hand. That's another messianic psalm. They're talking about Jesus Christ. They pierced my hands and my feet. 
I may tell all my bones, in other words, I can count all my bones. They just look and stare at me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. This was in the Old Testament, and all this took place in the New Testament. And then you are wondering, but God, but you just said by the Holy Spirit that you have set your king with a capital K. You set your king right high upon your hill of Mount Zion. You have given him the nations as an inheritance that he will rule the world with as uh, with a rod of iron. So why will it be again that you will forsake him? Why will it be that the same people that he is going to rule, those who are going to gather unto him, will now pierce him, will now cast, uh, uh, cast loss on his garment? Irreconcilable. Dilemmatic. Incongruous. Inexplicable. The prophets couldn't understand it. They couldn't understand it. Isaiah 52, 13. The Spirit of God ministered to Isaiah 52. Uh, to Isaiah, and he wrote it in, in 52, 13 in his, in, his, uh, in his writing. In Isaiah 52, verse 13. He says, my servant shall deal prudently. Speaking by the Spirit of God. He shall be exalted and extolled and very high. Did you hear that? God, the Son of God, God the Son, God the Father is saying by the Holy Spirit that God the Son will be exalted, that he will be extolled very high, that he shall deal prudently. But then the very next sentence, the very next sentence says, as many as were astonished at thee, because his visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. What? What is the Holy Spirit saying? In one breath, you said he will deal prudently, he will be exalted, he will be extolled and very high. Then in another breath, the Holy Spirit is saying that those who will come and see him, they will be astonished. But who is this? That his vision will be so mad that people will not be able to recognize him. Mad that his form will not be like the form of a human being. What is the Holy Spirit saying? These things, they are dilemmatic to them. These, two, these, sayings are in, these prophecies are incongruous. These prophecies are confusing. They are inexplicable to the prophets. They didn't know what to make of it. Even the angels didn't know what to make of it. Holy Spirit, what are you talking about? Even when we get to the New Testament, the Bible said there was a man called Simeon. Simeon had been waiting for the consolation of Israel to come. That is Jesus. He had been waiting for the day that Jesus would be born. And then Jesus was born. He heard about it. That Jesus had been brought to the temple for dedication. Now hear what the Bible says about Simeon. Simeon said this. The Bible says when the parents bring the child Jesus into the temple to dedicate him to the Lord. There was an old prophet named Simeon. And God said to him, he should not die till he has seen the salvation of the Lord. And he took the babe, he took Jesus and blessed God. And said this, now my eyes have seen that promise. This child will be a light to lighten the Gentiles, the nations and the glory of thy people Israel. Then the next sentence, listen to this. The very next sentence says, turning to Mary, the mother of Jesus, he said, Yea, and a sword shall pierce through your own soul. Wow. 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 With all the glowing things that Simeon had just said, now the mother of Jesus will have to suffer this fate unbelievable, irreconcilable. They couldn't understand it. But glory be to God. In Philippians 2, 6, 11, God reconciled it. He made it clear. He made it marvelously understood. This is what Philippians 2, 6 through 11 say. Who, talking about Jesus, though he was God, did not demand and cling to his rights as God, but laid aside his mighty power and glory, taking the disguise of a slave and becoming like men. He wasn't forced to do it. All those things that we read, those prophecies that came, 
that seem to, conf to conflict with what the Holy Spirit earlier said. No, no, no. Jesus, the Son of God, God the Son, deliberately, willingly allow those things to happen to him. He willingly allowed those things to happen. The Bible says he laid aside his mighty power and glory. He took upon himself the disguise of a slave and becoming like men. And, <clears throat> and he humbled himself even further, doing so as far as actually to die a criminal's death on a cross. Yet it was because of this that God raised him up to the heights of heaven and gave him a name which is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In other words, Jesus knew what he was doing. He willingly submitted himself to be beaten, to be crushed, to be, to be, to be lashed. He willingly submitted himself to be spat upon. All the things that they did to him that changed his visage, that changed his form. Jesus willingly submitted himself to them. Why? Because of the glory that was coming. He allowed that humiliation. He suffered and endured that shame. Why? Because of the glory that was coming. In fact, Hebrew 12 to say, Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, now the crown, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, this, I love this one, Revelation chapter 5. Now, listen to this. See how all it all ended for him. This lamb, as it had been slain, takes the book of redemption, the only one worthy to open it, and as he opens the book, they sing with a loud voice, 10,000 times 10,000, and thousands of thousands. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory, and everything God created in heaven, on earth, in the other world, heard, saying, Blessing, Honor, power, glory be unto him that sits upon the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Hallelujah. Amen. Brethren, when you are in the will of God, Jesus said, in this world we will have tribulation. But we should be of good cheer because he has already overcome the world. What happened to him is a mirror of what God wants us to see in our own lives. All the challenges that you are facing every day, once we are in the will of God, I, don't, don't say, oh, but I prayed, but I fasted, but I did this, I paid my tithe. Why are all these things still happening to me? Don't worry about it. The Bible says for Jesus, it was first the crown, uh, it was first the, the, the crown of thorns, and then the glory came. For us, the tribute we are in this world, we may be going through this tribulation, but the glory is coming. I am telling you that even during this pandemic, when all this is over, the glory is coming. It is now the pandemic, but the glory is coming. All the things that you have suffered during this period, God Almighty, as a child of God, God Almighty is going to make them look as if nothing happened. The glory of God will surpass what you have suffered during this period. This shutdown, all the things that this shutdown has taken away from you, God Almighty is able to restore a hundredfold. So, child of God, the glory is next. Your business that appears to be devastated will come roaring back because the glory is next. Now is a pandemic, but this pandemic will be over and the glory is next. Your business will roar back again. The job that you think you have lost God is more than able to give you a better one that surpasses what you have now. Your marriage that has been shaky before because of this pandemic, the glory of your marriage is now going to come back. All the relationships that have been affected negatively before because of this pandemic, the glory is returning to those relationships in the mighty name of Jesus. Now is a pandemic, but the glory is next. Now they are saying that the 
economy of the world is collapsing because of what is going on, but I can assure you that for the sake of the elect, the economy of the world will come roaring back. Get ready for that time. Get ready for that time. Don't give up. Don't give up. Jesus Christ knew what he was doing. The Bible says that if, this, if Satan had known that all this thing will end up in the resurrection. If he had known that all this thing will end up in our divine health. If he had known that all this will end up in our victory. If he had known that all this will end up with our receiving the joy unspeakable of the Holy Spirit. That he would not have crucified the king of glory. I am telling you today. I am prophesying to you today. That if the enemy had known what God was going to bring out of this pandemic. He would not have allowed it. The enemy would not have brought this pandemic pandemic. He would have, re- would have said, no, 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 don't bring pandemic to the world. But he didn't know. But God Almighty is going to checkmate him. Amen. God Almighty will checkmate him every step of the way. So take heart, be encouraged, stand in there, continue to believe God, continue to pray for the people of the world, continue to pray for those on the front line, continue to pray for your church, continue to pray for your family, continue to stand in the gap and be an intercessor that God has been looking for and stand in the gap and stand on God's word that now is a pandemic but the glory is next. Be getting, Get ready for the glory. Be preparing yourself for the glory. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Don't be discouraged. Don't feel sorrowful. Don't feel sad. Our God is a restoring God. Our God is a God of restoration. Now, you know when the Bible says in Joel that what the, what the locusts have eaten, what the caterpillar has eaten, what the canker worm has eaten, what the palmer worm has eaten, you ask yourself the question, why are those insects being named like that? Why are they, why didn't just the Bible say, oh, locusts or insects? Why did the Bible go to the extent of naming them one by one? It's because all those insects, they eat different parts of the tree. There are insects, there are those that eat only the leaves, the ones that eat only the branches, the ones that eat only the roots. So God is saying, it does not matter how deep you have been affected in this matter. From the leaves, to the branches, to the stem, to the roots, God can restore. He said, I will restore all. He's not going to restore 95%. All that the locusts have eaten. Now, oh, locusts, they are animals. These are these, these insects, they are animals. So if they have eaten all those things, they are definitely, they have already passed them out as waste. So how is God going to restore them? But that is why he's God Almighty. Whatever they have eaten, God said, I will restore. I prophesy to you today. That whatever you have lost in your family, whether it is the business or it is your job or some kind of relationship, whatever you have lost as a result of this pandemic, God Almighty will restore. I agree with you. I agree with your family that there shall be a restoration. And when the restoration comes, God does not restore the way man restores. When man restores, you can still see the sign that there is a restoration here that man did this one. That, that, that. When man restores, it is never, never a perfect restoration. There will always be some kind of comma and but there. But when God restores, it's better than the original. So I know that when God has restored your case, when God has restored your situation, you will be better than where you were before. The glory will be higher than where you started in the name of Jesus. If you receive it, shout hallelujah right there in your home. Now, the pandemic, the glory is next. Hallelujah. Now, if you are hearing me and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is your moment. This is your opportunity to surrender your life to him because he loves you so much. He loves you so, so much. You have no idea how much he loves you. He came and died for you. So that in situations like this, you will still have your peace. In situations like this, you will still have your joy. In situations like this, you will still have hope. You can place your hope in him. He's a restorer. He restores more than the way, more than the original. He can give you peace in the midst of storm. You need him now. Your family needs him now. So I'm going to ask you, give your life to him. Your life will never be the same again. Everything will change. He will give you peace. He will give you joy. He will give you hope. Everything will change. Glory be to his name. Just say after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me my sins. Wash them away with your precious blood. I believe in my heart 
that you are the son of God, that you came and died for me. I received the shed blood. And from today, I ask you to be the Lord of my life. Father God, give me the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because you said anyone who received Jesus, you will give the Holy Spirit. And so, dear Holy Spirit, I receive you by faith. Now I'm a child of God. Now I'm born again. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I congratulate you for joining God's family. I congratulate you for becoming born again, for becoming a child of God. And now go to our website, iccla.com, and connect with us on our social digital platforms. We will send you resources to help you grow in your journey with the Lord. Amen. I congratulate you again. Thank you for watching us today. Thank you for giving your life to Jesus. A new journey has started for you. Amen. Hallelujah. And now we are going to take our tithe. If you are in church again, we will say, come forward, come and put them on the altar so that we can prophesy over them. Uh, this is the time to do that. Uh, like Pastor Noni said, of course, uh, you, you yourself, you are the house of God, and that altar is in your heart. You can, you can right there where you are. Please, God, with your tithing. I, I, I said before that uh, when this thing, whole thing was announced, that uh, we shouldn't come out, there should be no congregating again, that they said many churches are going to go out of business because people of God are not going to give, uh, that only maybe the mega churches will survive. But I know that ICCLA will survive because I know you are faithful. You are not only faithful when you are physically here in church, you are faithful right there in your home. Let us pay our tithe so that we will have a building to come back to when all this is over. Let us pay our tithe. And I'm going to pray over the tithe right now. Father God in heaven, I bless your children who are supporting this ministry with their tithing, who are sustaining us during this period. Father, I pray that you will visit them in a special way, that you will sustain them financially, that you sustain them in every respect, O oh God, that as they are honoring you in faith, that you will honor them in return. Father, I pray the blessings of the tither over their lives. I pray that they will never be devoured. Nothing that concerns them will be devoured. And when all this is over, they will be able to say, during the pandemic, I was faithful to the Lord, and I know that you'll be faithful to them. Thank you, Almighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Look at the side of the screen. You will see the various options where you can give your tithe, where you can pay your tithe. Amen.
Most high God, it's time for us to worship the Lord with our offering. And as you prepare your offering, just pray this prayer with me. Lift up your voice to the Lord and let's pray together. Oh God of my salvation, I'm God of all deliverances. Crush and devastate, oh Lord. Whatever or whoever will arise during this season to take advantage of this present climate, to dispossess me and to devastate me. You're my God of all deliverances. Secure and bless my financial ground, O oh Lord, against every evil work and every diabolic mischief of the devourer. In Jesus' name, amen. I thank you, Father, for your sons and daughters that are worshipping you with their offering. And as they have professed with their mouth, we receive a securing of their financial ground against every rod of evil, every rod of lack, every rod of wickedness raised over their ground by the enemy to hollow them out financially and dispossess them of the portion you have blessed them with. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Oh, no. 
so much for worshiping with us today. All those who are joining us from all over the world, we thank you for allowing us to come into your home. I hope you have been blessed by God's word and I trust the Lord to keep keeping you until you join us again. And those joining us for the very first time, thank you. Thank you for joining with us. Hallelujah. And remember, now is the pandemic, but next is the glory. Hallelujah. Expect the glory. Amen. 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 Let's share the grace in fellowship. May the grace, grace of, our of our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, the love, love of God, God and, and the sweet, sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with, with us now and forevermore. forevermore. Amen. Amen. For surely, goodness, goodness and mercy are following us all the days of our lives, and we are dwelling in the, in the house of the Lord forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. Join us online again on Thursday for our midweek service. Glory At 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Amen. Amen.